The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, warned that the risks of the nuclear war at this point are very real. Is this another empty threat by Russia, or Russian officials are getting desperate and getting ready to do something unspeakable? And these are the things that we're going to talk about in my today's video. What's up, investors and people of Reddit? It's the Russian dude, and this is your daily update on Russian Ukrainian war as of Tuesday, April 26th. You can see the main events of the day to my right, along with the timestamps. Today, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, mentioned that in his opinion this conflict in Ukraine will be over through peaceful resolutions. He said that he expects that the mutual written agreements will be met, but at the same time Moscow will never decline pushing its own requirements, which they established since the beginning of this so-called military operation. But at the same time, the next thing you learn from the same minister, Sergei Lavrov, is that he is saying that the risks of nuclear war at this very moment are very real. He also said that Moscow will do everything to prevent this war, and basically Russia will be the last country to use the nukes. But just if some of you remember, only three days after the beginning of this war, Vladimir Putin ordered the nuclear troops to be in high alert. And at the same time, at the beginning of April, the United States of America cancelled its test of its intercontinental ballistic missile Minute Man 3. And the reason why would they do it is obviously not to escalate the situation. So as a result, we have Russia, which says that they will not let nuclear war to happen, and at the same time they're testing their intercontinental ballistic missiles, and on the other side, we have countries like USA, which abandoned the tests of nuclear weapons just not to escalate the situation. So my real question here is, is it really Russia which tries to stop the nuclear war? And by the way, if you like this style of daily news reporting, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please check the link in the description if you want to support Ukraine with us. I will be donating all of my Patreon memberships at the end of each month to Ukraine. And I'll do it during a charitable live stream, which will happen this Saturday, April 30th. In this picture you can see the women of Russian soldiers who died in Donbass region. All of them were given 10,000 rubles for death of their partners, which according to current exchange rate is approximately like $130. And just as a reminder, the Russian government promised those people who lost their loved ones in this war something approximately like $100,000, which obviously makes this $120-$130 compensation to be nothing even close to real promises. And at the same time, yes, you realize that approximately the cost of life in Russia is like $130. The Ministry of Defense of United Kingdom said that Ukraine has all the legal rights to attack the territory of Russia. What they meant by that is that Ukraine is authorized to use the Western weapons that was sent to them previously to destroy military objects that are inside Russia. And among such military objects, for example, can be military warehouses, oil depots and factories. In response to that statement made by the United Kingdom, the Ministry of Defense of Russia said that in case there are missiles strikes on the territory of Russia, Russia will have to attack the center of decision making, which is obviously Kyiv. And also as a reminder, a couple of weeks ago Ukraine said in case Kyiv will be attacked, they will respond by attacking Moscow. Today some soldiers were spotted in Moscow, Russia, rehearsing for the victory parade, which will happen this May 9th. And for those of you who might not know this, Russia is celebrating this victory parade since 1945. And the reason for this parade is basically celebrating the victory over Nazistic Germany. Germany. And it is also worth mentioning that probably at this very moment Putin is looking forward to find any sort of victory so he can present this before the parade. So that it can be celebrated as the real victory parade. Which is probably one of the reasons why Russia started actively engaging the south of Ukraine. Because I think in their mind it will be much easier to capture the south rather than fighting in the east where the resistance of Ukraine is so powerful. Yesterday the president of Ukraine Vladimir Zelensky met with the secretary of state and Blinken and Secretary of Defense Austin Lloyd. This was the meeting between the highest officials of Ukraine and US since the beginning of this war. Several agreements and conclusions were made and I'm going to give you the main statements of this meeting. First of all, the United States of America officially announced that they'll be supporting Ukraine now even more. They also mentioned that at this very moment the support of US exceeds the combined support of all the other countries. And that starting today, the United States of America will start asking its allies to continue supporting Ukraine by any means possible. The next thing they mentioned is that the United States of America, along with other Western 
countries will now start sending attack weapons to Ukraine. Because previously they were sending weapons so that Ukraine can protect itself. And lastly, they did some parallels between this current war and war between the USSR and Finland. In this war, Finland was obviously the underdog, but because of the support of Western countries, it was able to resist the attack of such a big country as the USSR. And despite the fact that Finland lost some of its territories, it was still able to retain its government. And by the way, it is already being reported that Ukraine started receiving heavy weapons. For example, America recently sent M142 HIMARS missile system to Ukraine. And this system allows to send missiles up to 300 kilometers range, which is going to be crucial for Ukraine in case there is a military action in Crimea Peninsula. And last thing about heavy attack weapons that Ukraine started receiving recently is the statement by Alexei Alestevich, who is the advisor to the president of Ukraine. He basically said that as soon as Ukraine starts receiving enough of such weapons, Ukraine will be able to launch counterattacks against Russians. Which basically means that the sooner they receive such weapons, the sooner they will be push Russians away from its territories. On this map you can see the current condition of this so-called military operation, which happens in Ukraine. And as you can see, the main military action is concentrated in east and south of the country. And by the way, if you want to see more details, feel free to pause the video. Today, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has met with the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. And these are the main statements that were made from both sides. First of all, Vladimir Putin mentioned that this special military operation was in accordance to every single law presented by the United Nations. He then also said that this military intervention was necessary because there was a genocide in Donbass region for the last eight years. The next thing he said is that there is absolutely no proof that Russians are responsible for Bucha massacre. And finally, he concluded that at this very moment there is absolutely not a single combat action in Mariupol region. And just as a reminder, Mariupol is one of the most destroyed cities at this very moment, where approximately 80% of its entire territory is occupied by Russians. And the only place which is still not occupied is the territory of Azovstal steel factory, which according to Russia is the main headquarters of Ukrainian Nazis. Russia was trying to capture this factory as well, but just a couple of days ago Putin said that he is going to cancel this order. And here are the statements that are made by the General Secretary of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. First of all, he blatantly called this so-called military operation of Russia as an invasion. Then he suggested to form a group between the United Nations, Russia and Ukraine, which will be discussing peaceful resolutions. And one of such peaceful resolutions is the creation of humanitarian corridors, which will be used by civilians so they can escape military zones. And the last thing he mentioned is that he asked Vladimir Putin to let civilians from Azov style steel factory in Mariupol to escape. During this meeting we were also able to see how Vladimir Putin drastically changed his position against alleged Ukrainian Nazis. In the beginning of this war he said that there is no way Russia is going to negotiate with these Nazis and drug addicts. And today he was saying that Russia is looking for any opportunities to find mutual agreements between Russia and Ukraine. The the meeting was concluded by Vladimir Putin saying his requirements to end this war. And this war obviously the recognition of Crimea to be a part of Russia and liberation of Donbass region. Today the parliament of Ukraine has adopted a law which allows civilians to carry guns. Now I'm not sure if this law will continue after the war is over, but at this very moment it just looks like that they're giving the civilians the opportunity to protect themselves. The advisor to the president of Ukraine Alexei Arestovich mentions that now there are even more lies among higher Russian officials. He basically says that at this very moment it is almost impossible to deliver any sort of bad news to Putin. Because in case something bad happens, those who are responsible directly and even indirectly will be prosecuted and even purged. For example, some of you might remember that the Admiral of Russian Black Sea Navy Igor Osipov was detained as soon as Russian missile cruiser flagship Moskva was sunk. Besides that, a couple of weeks ago approximately 150 federal security service agents were also purged. And even the Minister of Defense of Russia, practically the second person in Russia, Sergei Shoigu, already had two heart attacks, which allegedly happened because of unnatural circumstances. So as you can see, this is what we have. You either go to Putin and deliver something good and basically you are rewarded. Or if there is any failure on your side, you are getting purged or even sent to prison. So as a result, as it used to be normal in the Soviet era, generals and higher officials start to 
basically lie. In their opinion, maybe it is just better not to tell the entire truth and exaggerate even smallest victories. And maybe that's why at this very moment in his head Putin is winning this war. Because simply the truth almost never reaches him. A new law has been proposed in Chechnya how to punish those people who do not agree with the purpose of this so-called special military operation. And it basically says that if you do not support this war, first you'll be sent to prison and after this they'll relocate you to this war in Ukraine. And you can only imagine the morale and willingness to fight of these soldiers who are forcefully sent to Ukraine. There have been several reports by the Russian intelligence that Ukrainian side might use its Neptune missiles to make attacks against Crimea Peninsula. And just as a reminder, these are the same missiles that sunk the Russian Navy flagship called Moskva. So it is being reported that such missile strikes are getting credit to be done against the city of Sevastopol, which is on Crimea Peninsula. Also, several terroristic attacks are being planned at this very moment. And once again, all of this is according to Russian intelligence, which basically means at this very moment we cannot establish whether this is true or not. Because, you know, it can very well be just a fake information just to motivate Russians to go to this war against Ukrainians. The narrative here is, oh, these Nazi Ukrainians are getting credit to kill your friends and relatives, so start mobilizing and start resisting them. Or at least this is what they want us to feel. This night, two radio towers in Pridnistrovia region, which is between Moldova and Ukraine, were destroyed. These radio towers were mainly used to transmit Russian signals. And by the way, as you can see from this very map, the destruction of these two towers means that the war starts to go beyond Ukrainian territories. At this very moment, there is a red level terroristic threat announced in this region. And here we have the flight map and as you can see there is also no planes at all above Moldova. According to the member of Ukrainian delegation Mikhailo Podolyak, it means that Russia starts to engage even more countries in its so-called special military operation. And at this very moment probably the next target of Russia is the country of Moldova. And if you ask me at this very moment why would Russia need to invade another country, Moldova, I would definitely tell you I have no idea. And I mean, let's give it just a couple of days and see what the Russian government comes up with. But at this very moment, I see no sensible reasons why would they do this. My only assumption is that Russia will need these territories in the future so they can launch easier attacks against the south of Ukraine. Which, by the way, might be confirmed by this statement, which was made by the head of Independent Republic of Donetsk, Denis Pushilin. And he basically says that as soon as the second stage of this military operation is completed, which is, by the way, capturing the Donbass region, then next, the third step of this war must be the capture of Pridnistrovia territories. And obviously the reason he gives us is to liberate it. And from who? I have no idea. Thank you so much for your attention, stay safe and see you tomorrow.